where returns are stored before they're refurbished. Christmas is right around the corner and shoppers are hitting the mall getting their last minute gifts. 23 ABC's Emma Lockhart was at the Valley Plaza Mall just a little bit ago in the midst of the shopping chaos. As you can see behind me, the mall is packed with people. Christmas is just four days away. And for those who waited the last minute to get their gifts, well, the holiday rush is now in full swing. Yeah, we just got here and I'm ready to leave. So yeah, it's too many people. It took a good 10, 15 minutes to find a parking spot. Mall employees I spoke to say this weekend is just as busy as Black Friday. Shoppers can expect lines similar to what people experience today. While some of those items you're looking for might already be gone, but the deals are here. Multiple stores I saw are having large discounted sales. I love shopping like everyone who doesn't love shopping. It's Christmas season. I just shopped some stuff at H&M. Got some good deals, some sweaters, some shirts. Um, it's festive. Now, despite the long lines, people are definitely in the holiday spirit. I saw a lot of people decked out in holiday attire, so definitely feels like Christmas is right around the corner. Reporting in Bakersfield, Eva Lockhart, 23 ABC News. All right, Eva, thanks. And meanwhile, if you're on that holiday shopping rush, several stores around town are having extended hours. Kohl's is currently open 24 hours a day right now. Several local targets and Walmarts are open until midnight. For more information and a full list of extended hours, just head to our website, turn to 23.com. And meanwhile, if you're more of an online shopper and are planning on using Amazon to get those last minute gifts, here are a few tips for avoiding review scams on Amazon. The Wall Street Journal says to avoid fake reviews, look for ones from verified buyers and look past the star rating and actually read the review to see if it makes sense. The CHP wants to ensure everyone is safe while they hit the roads during this holiday season, and that's why they're bringing back their Christmas maximum enforcement period starting today. Officers will be on the road during this time through Christmas to ensure that the safety of everyone on the streets. They'll focus on speeding and impaired driving. According to CHP, last year 16 people died in traffic collisions, and more than 900 people were arrested for DUI during this time. Big changes are on the way for the Kern County Fire Department as the current Fire Chief Brian Marshall announced he'll be retiring in the near future and moving on to a position with the state. The department held a press conference earlier today to talk about the leadership shakeup. The Now's Vanessa Romo joins us now with more on what Marshall has to say. Vanessa? That's right, Jess. In a news conference held by Chief Brian Marshall, he says he is very excited for his new role, but also very sad to leave Kern County, a place he's known all his life. 52-year-old Marshall announced he is retiring his position with the Kern County Fire Department to become Chief of the Governor's Office of Emergency Services, a position appointed by Governor Jerry Brown. Marshall said he was appointed by Governor Brown yesterday and, has le and let his department know today. Marshall has been Fire Chief and Director of Emergency Services at the Kern County Fire Department since 2012, where he has served in several positions since 18, 1987. He says he just found out his new position yesterday and let his department know today. He says he will be a part of the board's decision on who will take his place. Uh, that is the most important thing uh, here in the county, to make sure that that fire chief that replaces me is ready to assume that role and has all the tools in the toolbox to be successful. Marshall says there is no set in stone date on when he will be leaving, but it will be sometime in January. Marshall will be paid about $160,000 in this new position. The county said it would consider its options for, for fulfilling positions after the start of the new year. For the now, I'm Vanessa Romo, 23 ABC. All right, Vanessa, thanks. A special event is being held this weekend in California City to honor a 12-year-old girl who was shot and killed. In July, Michael Wiggins, the young girl's uncle, was shot while he was standing outside of his home in California City. Trinity was inside and was hit by one of the bullets that went through the house. Michael and Trinity both died, and now a local youth program is holding a Christmas giveaway in memory of Trinity. The event is being held at the Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church located at 212332 Kiniston Street in California City tomorrow at 1 p.m.
Hundreds of local children got to fill the joy of Christmas a few days early, all thanks to toys donated by the community and Catholic charities. Kids and their families got to attend today's event, complete with hot chocolate, cookie decorating, and of course, an early visit from Santa Claus himself. In total, 175 kids got to take part. The event was aimed to support families who may be struggling financially. You never know where somebody is in the moment. Um, you know, it could, anyone could experience a hardship. And so I think it's just, you know, knowing that it could be your next door neighbor, just talking about hardships, um, realizing that there's no problem with identifying a hardship, but just being able to be there and support and love on people, I think is the most important part. Officials say they hope this shows others that you don't always know what someone else is going through in their life and that we should be supportive. Well, we have a programming note to pass along. We will be airing this year's Christmas Parade on Christmas morning. A special read broadcast of the Christmas Parade will air starting at 4.30 Tuesday morning. Then 23 ABC News will start at 6.30. Other newscasts will also be impacted on Christmas. There will not be an 11 a.m. newscast. 5, 6, and 7 p.m. newscasts are preempted by basketball. The Lakers are scheduled to take on the Warriors starting at 5 p.m. 23 ABC News will follow the game. Kamasi? At some point, most parents will find themselves needing a last-minute babysitter. But for one mother, not being able to find a babysitter led to a company-wide change that's now making a difference for her and all parents at her company. The Now's Corey Rangel explains. So here are the two items, and then this is okay. the gift receipt here. Okay, perfect. Thank you, you so much. Have a good holiday. As a working mother, Lynette Johnson knows how hard it can be to find last minute child care. It's a situation I wouldn't wish upon nobody because it's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? About a year ago, Lynette had to bring her then four month old son to work with her at Best Buy because she could not find anyone to watch him. Of all days, it was the day she had to give a presentation to corporate leaders visiting the store. It was a a hard choice to make between uh, being here to support to support my team uh, through that corporate visit or to the obligations I have to my son as well. Little did she know her desperate situation would become the inspiration for a new company policy. A human resources manager used Lynette's situation to push for change. Best Buy then teamed up with Care.com to offer 10 days of child care to employees for only $10. That covers up to 10 hours of care that can be used at home or at a daycare center. Me being able to impact other people's lives from, from my one small experience is very, very heartening. Like it's, I, words can't even explain it. According to Care.com, 72% of parents say their work has been impacted by child care falling through. Yet another report found only 4% of companies offer backup child care to their employees, which is why Lynette is thankful You're Best welcome. Buy not only saw a need for change, but did something about it. Creating something like this, like this type of incentive would definitely be, uh, would show the value into your employees. For the now, I'm Corey Rangel. All right, thanks, Corey. Next in our lineup, a look at what happens to a lot of return gifts. Only here on the now, we go inside the place where returns are stored before they're refurbished.
having access to those drugs. Newly released dash cam video shows a deadly explosion back in July. It happened in Wisconsin where a be it's believed that a private contractor hit a natural gas main. Wow, one firefighter died, several others were hurt. Many of us may be heading into 2019 with something that may have been unexpected and probably unwanted. We're talking about medical debt. A Kaiser Family Foundation survey found 4 in 10 people got a shockingly high medical bill in the past year. And those medical bills are the number one thing people worry that they won't be able to afford. About 11% of people have turned to some kind of charity for help paying those bills. GoFundMe CEO says a third of its pages are dedicated to helping people with medical bills and costs that go along with an illness. There are also organizations like RIP Medical Debt that helps forgive people's medical debt for pennies on the dollar. They buy it directly from providers though and they don't choose people individually, but they say they want to work with individuals in the future. You can also get help directly from friends or family if they're in a position to do that. Just make sure if it is a large amount of money that they check with a tax professional to make sure that it's reported correctly. Chances are you are going to end up going somewhere this weekend to shop. More than 90% of holiday shoppers wait until the very last minute to buy some gifts. This is according to the National Retail Federation. About $26 billion is expected to be spent tomorrow. That's even more than Black Friday. A lot of stores are staying open longer to collect your money, like Target and Old Navy. Most Kohl's are staying open now through 6 p.m. Christmas Eve, so you can shop there 24-7. We talked to Best Buy about some last minute gift ideas. This year, a trend that we're seeing for last minute shoppers are one size fits all gifts. So think of things like headphones, cameras, accessories for wearables. Those are all things that any of us can enjoy. Hmm. More expensive items like jewelry and luxury brands, they are also big sellers on the weekend before Christmas. A lot of celebrating happening over the next few weeks. That's why the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is out with a new public service announcement. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. <laughs> so this is a part of their buzz driving is still drunk driving campaign. On average, 300 people die in alcohol related crashes during Christmas through New Year's that holiday period. Some sad news for those of you who are planning on heading to Alta Sierra to board this weekend. The ski resort posted on social media that because of warm weather, they're going to be closed. Now this comes after a series of storms moved through Kern County, bringing 25 inches of snow to the mountain just over a week ago. According to their website, Alta Sierra has an 18 inch base of snow, but they haven't gotten any new snowfall this week. However, they are hoping to receive snow on Christmas Day and look to possibly open on December 26th. And we are going to take a live look outside right now at our Sky Cam, checking out downtown Bakersfield. And as the temperatures shift outside, it's not too bad at the moment. Not too bad. It's actually 49 degrees. It is continuously dropping and getting colder. So you may want to make sure you have that sweater tonight and tomorrow morning. Looking at our current temperatures across the valley, we see Fraser Park at 48, Grapevine at 46. We're seeing some fog on the Grapevine, so please be careful when you're out and driving. Let's take a look at our seven day forecast. Tomorrow we're seeing a high of 58 and a low of 45, and we're going to continue to rise in temperature Monday and then drop significantly down from a high 59 to a high of 52. We're going to see a 30% chance of rain there on Christmas on Tuesday, and then we'll continue to stay cooler throughout the rest of the week. Now taking a look at our region, tomorrow Lake Isabella, a high of 61, Tehachapi, a high of 56, and Fraser Park, a high of 50. Three. And we're also going to be seeing some wind gusts in the mountain areas, looking around 15 miles per hour, sometimes 22, just depending on the time of day. So please be careful again when you're out on the roads. And we continue on with our air quality. We have a moderate level of 78. There's still no burning unless registered. We're tracking the storm that's off the coast of California that's going to be moving in Monday night into Tuesday, bringing that slight chance of rain for Christmas morning. The now will be right back.
You might typically think of after Christmas as a time when people return those unwanted holiday gifts. A lot of those items actually get returned now. But did you know the items we take back to the stores or even send back online make up an entire business of their own? The Now's Chris Welch shows us. Think of this as the warehouse of misfit toys. How about Jurassic Park yep. uh, dinosaur? Yeah. I mean, obviously the box has seen better days, but the toy itself looks okay. Right. Okay. And misfit computers, appliances, speakers, and, well, you name it. Everything in here is a return sent back to the store or website it came from. The inventory that we tend to see is inventory that is damaged in shipping or has been opened by the consumer and therefore cannot be put back on the shelf. Brian Johnson is Senior Vice President of Liquidity Services. It's a company that takes returns retailers don't want to deal with. You look around here, I mean, it's no joke. Returns has got to be a big business. It's huge. It's huge. You figure about 10% of the returns from a brick and mortar retailer are going to be returned. It's even higher if it's e-commerce. Their clients include the top five largest big box stores in the U.S., and about half of the biggest online retailers. That means that of the estimated $1 trillion spent this holiday season, $100 billion of that will be returned. And that's where companies like this come in. They'll sort the items, and if it's in resellable condition, they'll prepare it to be sold on one of their two websites. But if there's damage... This is our refurbishment room. So we have consumer electronics that warrant us to go through and add value to them. And so we test and then eventually we'll repair that product if necessary so that we have the opportunity to sell that straight back to the consumer. Typically the consumer can get that for 60% of retail. So who's buying all these opened products? We get a couple pallets every now and then to have a garage sale. Well, people like Nevin Farrell, a teacher who sells discounted items on eBay for a second income. A lot of people have gotten into it and you just kind of got to know you got to find your niche. His niche? Beauty products. And Farrell says his rate of return is sometimes 90%. So the next time you return something, whatever it is... Is there a big resale market for toilet paper? Toilet paper and consumables in general, baby diapers, are actually very liquid to sell. Really? Yes. Okay. It could end up in a bin just like this, going to someone for much, much less. Reporting for The Now in Garland, Texas, I'm Chris Welch. That's cool. Thanks, Chris. Well, the holidays can be pretty expensive. We get that. But a newly named trend designed to save people a few bucks has a lot of people saying, bah humbug. This is called scrooging. And here, it's basically breaking up with the person you're dating so you don't have to buy them a Christmas present. An unofficial analysis of Facebook statuses found more couples break up on December 11th than any other day of the year. That's just early enough to avoid most gift giving and the holiday parties you might have to go to together. And as you may have guessed, younger people are more likely to screw you. One dating site revealed 18 to 34 year olds are the biggest scroogers and men are more likely to be the dumpers than women. Now, the good news is that Facebook data also shows the day with the least amount of breakups is Christmas. So if you've made it this far, you're probably going to be pretty okay. Next in our lineup, since we're all spent out, we're going to show you some places you can actually get things for free. That's next here on The Now.
By now, you've probably shopped till you dropped. You've spent more money than you would have liked to this holiday season. Andy Taylor is helping us with some incredible deals that won't break the bank. Free. It's one of the best words in the world. And who doesn't love free food, especially during the holidays? Instead of stopping by your local bagel shop for breakfast, if you join Panera Bread's rewards program online, you can leave with a free bagel for the rest of the year. If you're planning on taking the kids to see the new Mary Poppins movie over the holidays, before you buy your tickets, stop by Subway and get the limited time fresh fit for kids meal for around $5. Then you'll get a free movie ticket to see the Disney movie. And here's one that will take you into 2019 if you have a sweet tooth. If you buy the frosty key tag for just $2 at Wendy's before the year is up, Beginning in the new year, each time you grab a burger, show your tag, and you'll always leave with a free frosty treat. If you like to go out with friends for a drink on the weekend, head over to Applebee's. Each year, they celebrate the season with a $1 holiday drink. This year, it's a Jolly Rancher alcoholic beverage. Now, it might not be exactly free, but $1 is pretty darn close to it. All right, thanks, Annie. Some regular shops and bars are turning into a magical holiday wonderland. On Monday, here on The Now, we're taking you to one holiday pop-up that's gone from another neighborhood bar to a real-life Christmas movie. And coming up tonight on 23 ABC News at 11, a large explosion at a gas station on Highway 58 and I-5 near Buttonwillow. What officials believed caused the explosion and the latest on the person injured in that blast. Again, that's going to be tonight on 23 ABC News at 11. In the meantime, though, we are heading into the weekend, but we do have some information that we need you to know about the weather. Yes, tomorrow headlines, morning patches of fog that will continue on. We'll also have mountain wind gusts at around 15 miles miles per hour and there are chances of rain on Christmas Eve. This is what your Christmas day looks like. 52 high and a low of 40. So it's going to be pretty chilly on Christmas. That hot chocolate and those cookies look <laughs> delicious right now. Something I'm, warm. I'm so hungry right now. Yeah. <laughs> Dinner time for us. That's going to do it for us here on the now. We'll see you back here tonight for 23 ABC News at 11.